it's about time for you to meet your home inspector. He is by no means new to the industry and has over 14 years of experience and even built homes for Fortune 500 companies. We are going to be discussing topics like his home inspection process and why you should get a home inspection as a first time home buyer or a buyer in general. And be sure to watch all the way to the end to see what the lightning round is all about. If you find that this video is helpful, send it to somebody that might be in need of this information. His contact information will be in the description below and be sure to watch out for other home inspector videos. My contact information is also below. So if you're ready to buy or maybe you have to sell before you purchase, reach out to me. I'd love to have a conversation with you to help you get started. Let's get into it. What's up guys? Today we are bringing you James P with First Home Inspectors and he's going to be breaking down a day in the life as a home inspector. Go ahead, James, give us a little bit about it. All right, so it's pretty boring, but I'll tell you everything, all the main points. So first thing I do is I wake up and I just edit the report that I did the night before, last touches to it, and then I send it out to everyone. After that, I get ready just like everyone else, eat breakfast, shower, the whole shebang pull the tools that are charging from the night before out and put them in the backpack. Then I go hit inspection number one. While I'm there, I'm taking my phone out. I'm just taking photos of things that are right and things that are wrong. And then when things are wrong, I just put a note like, you know, like, hey, this is leaking. Hey, it's got a bad seal, etc." After I do all of that and finish up the home, I go into the car. I pull up the entire report on my laptop and make a quick round of edits right there. After that, I do the same thing for home number two. So pull the phone out, defects, note everything that's right and wrong that I can see. And then from there, uh, do another round of edits in the car. After that, get home. I uh, put everything to charge, get ready for bed, and then just make one round of edits before I go to bed. And then once again, in the morning, whole thing all over again, where I finally do that last round of edits right there and then send out all the reports. So looking at the report three times helps me kind of tie together ideas that I wouldn't uh, want to add a home. So if something's wrong over here, the second look, I can think, hey, something might be wrong over here too. I need to be a little more skeptical of what I saw on this side of the home. Mm -hmm. And so doing that a few times kind of gets me to give the highest quality report out to a client and then you know set them on their way for home ownership. Wow, pretty cool. So break down to us maybe a quick, crazy story that you have <laughs> experienced in your career so far. So I had this house I was inspecting a few weeks ago. It was for an investor. They had three properties all on one lot. And the homeowner had a pretty contentious relationship with the person that was living in the property in the back, right? Ooh. Well, the person that was living in that back property knew that the end was near and they wouldn't be able to live in this house any longer. <laughs> and so they decided that they were just gonna pull all the wires from the electrical panel and they would just cause <laughs> massive damage. And I honestly could not believe how they pulled it off. You know, it wasn't like the most educated or like tradesworthy people that I've seen back there. Um, but somehow they were able to undo the entire panel without electrocuting themselves. So pretty expensive fix. They met out alive, which, you know, good for them. But yeah, to me, that was one of the nuttiest things I've, I've seen. Yeah. I, yeah. That's, that's pretty insane so you know don't no diy in that <laughs> no no diy in that you're gonna need some union electricians over there to kind of patch that all back together <laughs> nice so tell tell our our listeners a little bit about what got you into uh becoming an inspector so i've had a long kind of history in the construction field my high school had a vocational program i got a degree in construction management from the college of engineering at unlv uh, I went on to be a construction project manager. Uh, I built homes for Pulte, and then finally in my nine to five career, I ended up with uh, being a land development manager at Toll Brothers, where I'd buy large parcels of land for them, and then we just redo everything, get it set up for houses. Yeah. Uh, somewhere along the way, one of my buddies was doing his 11 month walk and he's like, hey, I don't know what to look for in this. Can you help me out? Mm -hmm. And because I was the only friend he had that had any construction experience at all. <laughs> so I went in there and I found a whole bunch of stuff. And one thing is I found he had an upgrade that they actually didn't install. So he paid an extra $750 for something, Ooh. didn't actually get it. And I was able to identify that. And then after that, he was so thankful, so appreciative. And then I was like, hey, I provide you a ton of value. And like, it didn't take me that much time to do that. Awesome. And at that time, I wasn't even licensed. I didn't even take the course or know the, like, the standard things to look for. And then he was like, hey, man, if you want to do this, 
get your license and I'll promote you to all my friends that live in our you know, Inspirata group. Winning. And so <laughs> I got the license. I ended up working for a couple more years for uh, you know, a nine to five company, Toll Brothers. And then after that, I reached manager and I was like, oh, I was kind of ready to make the jump. So <laughs> I uh, you know, started marketing and then finally went full time into this. When you do get a new a client or just somebody who's looking to have a home inspection yeah run run us through your process of what that what they should expect and what that's like yeah so the first step is just to figure out what type of inspection they're looking for so if they want one for a brand new build if they want an 11 month walk, month walk if they want you know trying to buy a resale home or if they want a maintenance inspection those are kind of the four main categories right and each of those has their own parameters so uh with new builds you need to send out certain documents uh with Resale homes, it's just really, you know, me, I have to talk to a seller at some point or, you know, pass my information along to them. It helps me figure out a timeline of how fast we need to move and how much time we have. Mm. After that, I ask for the address of the home so I can just see what the home looks like, right? Got there it. are certain homes I won't do. I do not do uh, mobile homes. I don't do homes with crawl spaces. Crawl space homes are usually homes built in like the 1960s or 1950s. Ooh. And so I, yeah, those are just homes I don't do. And so if I can identify that real, real quickly, I just let the client know like, hey, there's someone else out there that's better suited for his job that can give you what, you, what you're looking for, right? Got it. Um, after that, we go into pricing and scheduling. So I'll look at the square footage, the age, and then somewhat of the condition of the home. If it's beat up, we have to charge a little more. It's in pretty good shape. We'll you know, keep the cost down a little bit. Mm -hmm. After that, if they agree to the price, we go into scheduling. And then if they you know, can agree on a time, I send out a confirmation email that lists out you know, what you can expect from a home inspection, the pre-inspection agreement, uh, the timeline, and then payment options and instructions. I go out, I'll inspect the home, I'll give them the report. If they have any questions, they can call me or they can attend the home inspection itself. Mm -hmm. And then from there, any questions along the way, they can always hit me up and then I'm happy to answer them. So um, on that subject, do you usually recommend that they maybe show up during at some point of the inspection? It's definitely a good idea to show up uh, towards the end. If not, I highly recommend that people, you know, schedule a call with me to go over it via Zoom. Yeah. I think a lot of the customers I've had that are the happiest are the ones that see the entire report, have some questions built up. And then when I can just run through the entire thing and just lay everything out, it's like, hey, this is extremely important whether you know it or not. And this item that you're really worried about, mm -hmm. it's pretty common, usually doesn't cause damage, right? Or cause any serious issue later on. The happiest customers are the people that do that, which I, I find really interesting. But a lot of people, especially for a big home, I, I really recommend showing up because in a small home, like in a big home, it's just hard to find everything. Right, because right? what I call is a northwest bedroom on the second floor. You're like, oh crap, which way is west? You know, <laughs> like I have no idea where that is. And so that's the reason is being uh, being able to identify where the issues are is crucial. Yeah, and it's it's often overlooked when people are selecting a home inspector. How important is it to read the document? Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> We're not trying to throw shade at anybody, but please tell us, yeah. should they be reading these documents? I, so, so here's, I think, I think what, I think what people need to know is that this is a document that's long. I'm describing an entire house, you know, you know, oftentimes half a million dollars worth of property, right? And it's not going to read, you know, it's not going to be a four minute read. You know, the, the, like, <laughs> it, this is going to take some time. And I think the first step in this process to let people know that this is going to take a minute, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I would budget around two hours total. And I'm not saying the entire report takes two hours to read. As I say, read it and probably your first read is going to take a while, right? right? And then just read it over and over again. The software that I have, allow, what it allows you to do is that in a home inspection report from pretty much every inspector, you're going to get a lot of items. Some of them are really important, some of them not as important. Mm -hmm. And what my software allows people to do is that, hey, let's say I gave someone 50 items on a home that's a little more beat up, right? Mm -hmm. You can go through and pick out maybe the 20 that are really important to you right then and there. Step away and come back to it. Boil that down to 10 and then maybe step away, come back and boil down to a little bit less, right? Whatever the deal fits is like, you know, uh, allowable, right? And once you kind of do that a few times, you figure out what's truly important, what are the real deal breakers for you? Every home inspection report can be a little overwhelming. Understanding that it's gonna take a little more time and setting that expectation is, is crucial to kind of getting, you know, making a really smart decision when you're buying a home. Excellent advice. On that subject of, you know, repairs, right? Because that's like what every buyer, once they get it back, you know, I, I know our feedback is usually like, 
oh, so what are we, you know, what are we doing with it? And I'm just like, okay, you know, well, did you read lines such and such? And they're like, no. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm glad that you said that because I'm just like, well, if I'm reading it, you might want to read it. Yeah, too, right? yeah. And um, so when it comes to the repairs, when, and I know, usually at that point the buyer will want to turn immediately to the inspector and be like all right how much does this cost to fix it yeah what is your response so the thing is i can't tell people how much things cost to fix and the thing is because i come from a contracting background i have my own you know ballparks of how much everything costs but that doesn't mean that anyone around town is going to go off my pricing at all for example if someone wants to electricians want to charge a hundred dollars to fix an outlet you know last week mm -hmm. this week demand could have shot up and they want three hundred dollars to even come out so Ooh. so if if i give that pricing expectation people could look at me and be like dude what the heck man now i'm out 200 bucks and it goes on like that yeah. right you uh, liar yeah you lie you set me up for failure like what are you doing man like now you have to pay me well i wouldn't have done this if you told me yeah so so, so you really want to go to these people that are going to fix your house directly and ask them how much it costs. Another big part of that too is that like, for what I know, you know, I have single pricing for everything and that's for an electrician to come out and fix one thing, right? So I have pricing for they're going to come out and fix one outlet, right? Or and then if I need, they need to do a panel, I have the cost for them to come out and fix the panel. I don't have the cost for them to do the panel and the outlet, which is often cheaper. Right. And so for me, like, so if you ask me for pricing, I'm always in my head, I always price way too high. And this is just me talking to myself because I don't give out pricing. But like, it's always way too high. And then I'm always a little relieved when their pricing is less than that <laughs> because I price <laughs> each item out individually. Yeah. Right. Um, so definitely don't come to me for pricing. Uh, your real estate agent will have people that they like, that they like and they know and they trust that can give you really awesome, reliable pricing for when, you know, it's time for you to move in. And then, you know, if, whether the burden to repair these items are on you or the seller, you know, yeah. that's that's a better place for it. The next item, and this is kind of on a small tangent, is I, uh, you know, Kate, hey James, can you tell me which items I really need to fix? Mm. And then can you put that in writing? Excellent. No, I cannot Excellent. do that. Yep. I, I cannot do that. So like, um, there's a whole, there's many facets to answering this question, but one of them is just the insurance liability on me, right? No insurance company is going to allow me to write, Hey, just fix these four items. Because if one of the other items ends up being bad, you can come after me for that. And then this new set of lists, this new list that I gave you almost in a way becomes an inspection report in itself. Right. That's missing a lot of information. So it's best to talk to contractors at that point. Uh, or talk to a real estate agent or family friends or something like that to get you a better idea on which items that you really want to fix. And some of these items, I'll take, I'm going to kind of rambling a little bit, but like some of these items are really particular to certain people mm -hmm. and what in what situations. And I'll give you like another example about this. I was doing a house and uh, he's like, hey, James, which items should I really fix? Well, first, it's like everything, but it was a verbal <laughs> conversation. So I feel a little more comfortable saying, yeah. you know, certain items versus the next. And I was like, hey, the buyer has grandchildren, right? He's gonna have a bunch of grandchildren running in and out here. He's like, yeah, okay. Well, the next thing you wanna do is really make sure your pool safety's up. Ooh, because while you're thinking, fine. hey, there's something going on with my AC system, and I, and I appreciate that is expensive. We're talking about a life safety issue. You know, kids right. going in the pool and drowning. So what I deem is really important and what a buyer you know, deems is really important are two separate things. And so that's a, just one of the many reasons, do not ask a home inspector what <laughs> items you should really fix yeah. on, on a report. Yeah. yeah. Love it, love yeah. it. That is perfect. Mm -hmm. In your opinion, like the coolest home that you did where you're just like, oh, I just really enjoyed this inspection or is there even a thing? I I would say for the most part that <laughs> the coolest. Oh, it's gonna be a good one. <laughs> the coolest homes I do are big homes with not a lot of issues. They're just so fun. <laughs> He's like, I'm in and I'm out. I'm, I'm in, you know, it's got, it doesn't smell like, you know, cat pee or anything. And it's like, I don't have to write up 7,000 items on the home and, and I'm out. I think, I think from time to time, what I actually like is home that I get to kind of show off a little bit on my Instagram story. Yeah. So if it's a really big home with a really beautiful backyard, like I love taking a photo of that, you know, and adding that to the story. Yeah. Or um, if it's in a high rise, I like that a lot too because awesome. people love the high rises. It's great views, right? Yeah, in a high rise right yeah. now. So, you know. <laughs> we can see out to everything in town. It's pretty cool. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So th those are those are honestly my favorite. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. You mentioned we are in a high rise, and our parent company just to drop this in really fast does have two very active listings. So if you're interested, stay tuned to the end, and I'll link those videos 
for you so you could see the home tours because of course I got both of those recorded for you guys. So stay <laughs> tuned. Let's go ahead and do our lightning round <laughs> with Inspector James here. So essentially what it is, is it's 16 questions, oh, man. one six. <laughs> in 60 seconds oh wow okay all right i'll try to keep it short <laughs> but the good part about it is it has nothing to do with real estate and it's all about you okay, so no right. right or wrong answer to any of these uh -huh. and our first question are you ready yeah let's do it all right i'll try i'll try to get the question out very fast for you so, okay number one favorite local spot oh uh beetles tacos Ooh, number two are you an early bird or a night owl early bird one word to describe your business journey Business journey? Mm -hmm. uh, tumultuous. Ah, one word to describe your character. <laughs> Honest. You're, you're stuck on a desert island. What's the one thing that you have to have with you? Sparkling water. <laughs> <laughs> Coffee or tea? Uh, huh? Coffee, Coffee or tea? Coffee, 100%. What's your hidden talent? Uh, I used to, uh, drumming. Ew, Very good at drumming. Like yeah, it. yeah. Favorite book? Ooh, uh, 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 Sapiens by Yuval Harari. Nice. I have that, that is so, a really good book. <laughs> if you could go anywhere in the world right now, where would it be? Uh, six hours away to San Diego. Oh, ah, yeah. you guys. Yeah. Okay. If you could be a superhero for a day, who would you be? Oh, man. <laughs> Probably, you know, Batman. That, that was the best movie out of all of them. Fair, fair. And if you could have dinner with any famous person from the past or the present, who would it be? Oh man, honestly, probably Yuval Harari. He's not that famous. He's the guy that wrote the book. Uh -huh. Super cool book. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, what's one movie or TV show you can watch over and over again? I was watching Dodgeball. Dodge, dip, <laughs> duck, dive, and dodge. I could watch that movie forever. That was so funny. <laughs> so, funny. Uh, so, what was your very first job? Very first job. Okay, first, like, actual W9. Uh, I was a Hollister. Uh, okay. They call them models, but I was folding clothes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's be honest. Let's be honest. Yeah, <laughs> but before that, I was like doing some construction stuff, or I was like painting stuff. I was child labor. It was like I was like 15 years old. <laughs> I was painting my ex girlfriend's mom's house. Dang, <laughs> yeah, she put me to work. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a favorite weird food combination? Oh, okay. This is not necessarily weird, but it is a favorite. I love the apple turnovers from Smith's. You put them in the air fryer and you put a dollop of ice cream on that. It's not necessarily weird, but it's not done often. And I'm trying yeah. to spread the word about it. More Ooh. people need to be eating that. <laughs> okay, I gotta ask one more question. Go for it. Where the heck did you come up with that? I have kind of this creative mind. <laughs> with just, food? Uh, yeah, with Sorry. food. I was, I was like, during the during COVID, people were air frying everything. I just air fried everything and just like, let's see what happens here. <laughs> Very interesting. What's your favorite Las Vegas attraction or hidden gem? Uh, Las Vegas attraction or hidden gem. Ooh, man. Okay, you know what's really cool? If you go off to Bears Best, where that golf course is at, kind of kind of near the summit, they have mm -hmm. these beautiful trails back there that no one knows about. They're originally biking trails, but you can walk them too. And oh. they're they're pretty sick. Like it is real you don't even feel like you're in Vegas anymore and you're like on the other side of the mountain. It that is, is pretty cool. It is really, really cool. Out. Yeah. All right. And then the last and final question. Is if a genie granted you one wish to come true right now, what would it be? Oh, man. <laughs> uh, genie would say, hey, you should have bought a house seven years ago. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. <laughs> Nice. Well, yeah. thank you so much. I appreciate it. I hope you got a ton of value off of this video. And as promised, here are the two Regency Tower high rise that are currently for sale. Also, check out the video here that breaks down all the amenities that are included within the HOA for the Regency Tower located in the Las Vegas Country Club. My name is Ashara Gamino, your Las Vegas realtor. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.